Hey everybody, thanks for watching. Don't forget to click the subscribe button and the bell icon so you get notified of each new video as they come out. Hey everybody, I'm JJ Johnson. You're watching Reality Survival. And today we're going to talk about the 10 top 10 tips for how to survive civil war. So this isn't really going to be getting into the, you know, the nitty-gritty and the tactical kind of level. This is more along the lines of the strategic kind of thinking that you might want to have when you go into deciding that you're going to take part in something like that. This is a question that's been asked to me by several people over the years and um, I'm just now getting around to it, but I think it fits pretty well into the video series that we've had recently on the Prepper Trifecta series and all that kind of thing. So I figured I'd go ahead and throw it in here. So this video kind of assumes that you have your basic preps in order, uh, that you're well supplied, you have a group at your location, and for the time being you've bugged in somewhere. Um, you didn't really ask for or facilitate the war, but it's kind of come to your doorstep, so now what? Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of use the OODA loop to talk about the first five of these things, because I think it kind of falls in and I'll explain each one. So the first one is observe. So how many sides are there? You know, not all civil wars are just two-sided. Um, Many have multiple factions with their own agendas, um, and you need to, you know, really look and try to figure out which one is most closely aligned with your morals, your values, which side is trying to establish a constitutional republic, and which ones are utilizing tactics that are acceptable, you know, when compared to your personal moral code. Um, so that's the first step is really just trying to gather some intelligence on the situation. What's going on? Who's fighting who? What are their goals and objectives? What are they trying to do and everything? So then as you start to orient, that's step number two, um, you're determining, you're going to want to start to determine who the leaders are. Um, and if the side that you think that you might be, you know, kind of uh, leaning towards choosing, do they have a plan? Is that plan a feasible plan? Is it ethical and is it viable? Uh, what are the rules of engagement? You know, can you live with those rules? Are these people professional and experienced? Do they understand the cost of what they're asking people to pay with their lives? Uh, and are they blowhards or hotheads that are reckless with life and resources? You know, I think that. Uh, Reserving judgment and seeing how things go at first may be prudent if you don't believe that the leaders are competent and ethical. So, you know, the first thing is you're taking a look, you're trying to figure everything out. As you start to kind of orient yourself, you're trying to really break down into, you know, who's doing the leading, what are their objectives, how are they going to, you know, uh, go about this, and, and do they seem to be following uh, any kind of an ethical code or anything like that. But at some point, you have to decide. And so that's number three. And you know, you and your group need to decide if you're going to openly fight. Are you going to just provide support? Uh, are you going to stay neutral? Maybe, maybe you decide that you're not going to. That you know, not participating is also a choice. Um, and then, if so, which side will you side with? Which side is right? Which side reflects your morals and values? You know, picking a side is consequential. Okay. Um, it's, it's one of the most important things that you're going to do. And that's why it kind of, you know, all goes into the top three on this thing here because, you know, acting irrationally and, um, just jumping right in may not be the smart choice and it could, it could leave you, you know, hanging out to the dry there. Um, so, you know, remaining neutral or just quietly providing support may be a realistic option for some people or groups. It really depends on, you know, your medical issues, your physical ability, and your ability to support yourself. Um, with number four is act, right? That's the, that's the fourth one. And the key thing here, I think, is knowing your limitations and your worth in a potential combat situation. Because... You know, the, the reality of the situation is, is that not everybody is going to be a trigger puller. Maybe you are an infantry guy. 
Uh, maybe you're a sharpshooter, and perhaps you know you're good at tactics or ambushes or close quarters battle, but maybe you're a mechanic. Maybe you're a gardener. Maybe you're a cook. Maybe you're a, a nurse or something along those lines. Um, on average, it takes four to five people to support one person on the front line. So uh, I think it's important that when you decide, you know, when you act, when you decide, you get to that point when you're gonna, you're gonna volunteer, you're gonna do something or whatever. Um, be realistic about what it is that you can contribute, because trying to, to, uh, you know, be the hero, be the guy on the front lines, and all that kind of stuff. If you're, you know, not in physical shape for it, if you don't have any particular experience in that. If you haven't had any, you know, real training in those kinds of things, whatever the case may be, you might be more of a liability to the group than if you had just stayed back and, you know, uh, worked on, you know, logistics, you know, bullets, beans, and band aids, and those kind of things, or something along those lines. Um, so the point here is, is that you just really need to be um, thinking about volunteering for things that you can handle with proficiency and expertise. This is not a fantasy. You know, if you if it came down to this, it's a serious situation where people are die, and if you're not honest about your capability to contribute, it could cost a lot of lives and even jeopardize the entire group as a whole. So that's a fairly important uh, one in the group here. So number five is observe. We go back through the loop again. You kind of start that process again, and on this one, I really just wanted to touch on uh, trust but verify information about the situation. Continue to gather information from multiple and varied sources. I would recommend creating a human source network of people to help you gather information and stay apprised of the situation on both or all fronts if possible. Uh, don't just get your information from those in command because uh, it, a lot of times they will shade or tint the information to their favor in many situations. Um, maintaining situational awareness uh, will give you the ability to make good decisions at the right times and could potentially save your lives. So uh, you go back into that observation mode once you've kind of decided and you even if you're just a cook or if you're just whatever you know if you're just doing maybe auto repair or keeping trucks running or whatever the case may be it's important for you and your family and your group to stay apprised of what's going on to make sure that your group is still doing the things that they say that they're doing that they're you know progressing in the way that they said they were going to progress they're following their plan you know and, and that they're not straying from their initial you know goals um, okay so number six here is uh, study military tactics start now there's no reason why you can't study this stuff now especially guerrilla tactics unconventional warfare and insurgencies you want to think about uh, understanding for or understanding how to plan for small and reasonably attained but lethal victories uh, the side who plays the long game will end will win in the end. Uh, persistence, tenacity, and continuous lethality, or you know, lethality in engagement after engagement, has a very demoralizing effect. It's, in my opinion, anyway, and, and most people who've studied any kind of insurgencies will tell you that it's far better to have ten operations with two kills each than to have one big operation with ten kills. Okay. Um, that's kind of insurgency 101. So you want the other side to know that every time they leave on a mission, some someone and their buddy are not coming home versus allowing them to go out on several missions without suffering any losses and then returning home with confidence. So small continuous stings are the order of the day when it comes to that kind of thing. So you can study up on that stuff now. You know, there's a lot of different books out there that, that talk about tactics, military tactics, insurgencies, you know, different things of that nature. And I would uh, highly recommend that you add those things to your proper library and to your, your knowledge, you know. Okay, uh, number seven is win hearts and minds. And this one might actually be one of the most important ones on here. Um, always remember to do what you can to win the hearts and minds of the people, especially those who are not 
taking sides. Um, you, you never want to forget that how important this is. I, I really can't stress this enough. Um, always plan in such a way as to minimize innocent, innocent lives being lost. When possible, make sure to take the spoils and when reasonable, distribute those amongst the, mo amongst the locals, amongst the people who are not necessarily taking sides. Um, because you want to win them over to your favor. That is, that is the goal there. Um, if you fail to consider this, those who are staying neutral or who are desperate for food will rat you out and sell you down the river in order to save their own families uh, at any possible opportunity. So, you know, as we all know, the whole three percenter thing, you know, only a small percentage of people actually do the fighting. There's a bigger uh, percentage of people behind them who support their efforts and those kind of things. And then there's a large part of the populace that doesn't get involved at all. And that is seen in civil wars everywhere, not just the American Civil War or whatever, or the American Revolution or whatever. Um, so focusing on improving the lives of those people who are not getting involved is strategically extraordinarily valuable because they are the people who watch, who see what's going on, and who can report information that could be detrimental to your group, to other people. So if you don't take that in consideration, uh, you're, you're just, you're missing the ball entirely. Okay, so number eight is return life to normal. Uh, always keep a focus on returning life to normal and reestablishing a constitutional republic. Uh, far too many civil wars throughout history all over the globe end with a tyrannical dictator. So, and that again goes why I'm saying trust but verify the information on the on the point earlier, because uh, once people get power and they start to get a, a taste for it and all that kind of thing, they want more and they want more and they want more, and then plans tend to change. You can't let that happen. Uh, many start out with noble intentions and end with disastrous consequences. Focus on the areas you can control, but always continue to focus on getting life back to normal, back to an established republic. Number nine, honestly and continuously evaluate tactics. Conduct hot washes and debriefs after each mission. Uh, track the style and the type of attacks that you're using to ensure they don't become predictable or repetitive. Because if you don't pay attention to that, other people will, and they will pick up on your patterns, and that's going to be problematic. Okay, uh, number 10 is don't get a big head. Stay humble, stay focused on small winnable victories. Overconfidence is the enemy. Uh, always have the numbers and variables in your favor, and no heroic action movie nonsense. So, again, this is just my thoughts on it, just some uh, kind of high-level thinking, you know, like it's not like down in the weeds and on tactics and, you know, you got to shoot this way or do that. Um, but it's stuff to consider before you jump in and, and get involved in something like that. So I know the obvious question is, is do I think that there's a possibility of a civil war happening in the United States anytime soon? No, not really. Uh, I don't. I don't really give it a whole, whole lot of credence. It's. It's somewhere probably. You know, down in the, in the top ten things that I think would be most likely. It's probably down in the seven or eight or nine or ten, kind of thing. Um, but it's always possible. I mean, you never know, and and it's hard to say what could be the catalyst for that. You know, I mean, there's. Uh, I've been reading a book lately uh, called Black Swan by Taleb, um, and it. The whole black swan idea really comes from financial crashes and financial crises and stuff like that, but it can be easily applied to this kind of a situation here. And the, and the idea behind a black swan event is it's a it's a series of things or 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 a circumstance happening that nobody saw coming, and I think that's more likely. I think that is uh, quite possibly you know the, the most likely lead into some kind of a nation disaster nationwide disaster or something that we just haven't thought of um, but you know it's it's important to to do these thought exercises and to think about this stuff because it would it might help someone um, 
be more careful and more more uh, considerate in their thought processes before just jumping in with both feet. And so I'll have this up at uh, realitysurvival.com. And as with all the articles that I have up there, all the blog posts, you can always print them off in a PDF format and put them into an emergency binder or you know whatever the case may be. Use them however you want. Um, it's free, you know, like that. I just ask that you don't republish them on another site or anything. Um, but as long as you're keeping it to your own personal use, man, feel free. Um, so anyway, I hope that's been helpful. I would be curious to know what you guys think are the top 10 tips for how to survive civil war. So I look forward to seeing your thoughts on it. If you want to make a video response, that's cool, or do a blog post on it, or just stick it down in the comments below. That would be great. As always, guys, definitely appreciate it when you click the thumbs up button, when you share it with your friends on Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. And don't forget to leave the six Ps. Proper prior preparation prevents poor performance. Stay safe, guys.